Okay, we are back um, from our 15 minute break. I would like to do roll call to establish that we still have a quorum. Dolores Trujillo is present. Vice President Mary Fagan. Mary Fagan present. Elizabeth Woods. Woods present. Imelda Seha Buckowitz. Thanks, Emma. I'm here. Um, Jovita Dominguez. Jovita's present. Susan Naranjo. And Patricia Wynn. Patricia's present. Okay, everybody's back. So we can move on to the next agenda item, Education and Licensing Committee. Go ahead, Jovita. I think you're on mute. Good, um, good morning. Um, my name is Jovita Dominguez. I um, am the chair of Education and Licensing Committee. And um, I would like to um, welcome everybody. Um, we, um, I believe we need to um, take, since we've done roll call, um, I know I know that um, Mary, uh, Dr. Mary Ann uh, McCarthy is our staff liaison and she's, um, thank you very much for your support. Um, would you um, like to um, say anything, Mary Ann? Mary Ann McCarthy, I am a nursing education consultant and the liaison to the uh, Education and Licensing Committee. I'd like to say Happy New Year to everyone and welcome and especially welcome to Trisha um, on her first day on our committee. Yes, thank you, Trisha. She, yeah, Dr. McCarthy will be very, very um, helpful. She's she's still helping me through the process. <laughs> um, I I believe that um, we need to take um, BRN moderator. Would you please take us to um, to any comments the public has? The comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, thank you. We will go to agenda um, item 8.2, which would be review and vote whether to approve the previous minutes in, on October 7th, um, 2021. Um, I did review them and I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second, this is Mary. Thank you, Mary. Um, I believe uh, BRN moderator, would you take us, if there's no um, other board members that have any comments on the, um, on the uh, motion or the minutes, uh, we can take it to, be, um, to public comment. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. 
I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. I would like to take it um, for a vote. I, Jovita, um, approve the minutes. Marianne Fagan? Mary Fagan, yes. Susan, yes. Oh, Betty Woods? Not on this committee. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, then um, I believe Trisha is our new member. And I'm going to abstain just because I wasn't there. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, um, Marianne, I believe that, do I, ha did I miss someone? Nope. I think you got everyone and we're Thank ready you. to go. Would you like me to start with 8.3? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item 8.3, discussion and possible action regarding whether to recommend ratification of minor curriculum revisions, acknowledge receipt of program progress reports, and whether to recommend ratification of clinical facility approval or other action. So according to board policy, nursing education consultants may approve minor curriculum changes that do not significantly alter philosophy objectives or mm -hmm. content. Approvals must be reported to the Education Licensing Committee and to the board. Minor curriculum revisions may include the following categories, collect curriculum changes, work study programs, preceptor programs, and public health nurse certificate programs. A list of schools who have submitted minor curriculum revisions, clinical agency and facility approvals, and program progress reports have been, uh, that have been approved by the nursing education consultants are in your materials packet under the same names. This is a consent agenda item. Thank you. Um, I motion to um, accept. Do I have a second? Thank you very much, Dolores. Um, um, BRN moderator, take us to public comment, please. I'm sorry, Jovita, my, my apologies. Is, is Dolores on this committee? Yes. Okay, my apologies. This is education and licensing, correct? Yes. Oh, maybe not. No, I have I have Jovita, Mary Fagan, Susan, and Tricia. Mistake. I had it to the open to the wrong page. I'm sorry. I no, know. no, no worries. I just want to make sure we don't have to go yeah. back. <laughs> so no worries. <laughs> no worries, Dolores. It's better to be safe and not, you know, we don't want to miss you. Thank you. Yeah, thank so you. we need a second still. I'll second. Is that Marianne? I mean Mary Fagan, sorry. Yeah, I think there was someone else too, but I'm happy to second. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, BRN moderator, would you take us to public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. 
I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? I would like um, to take um, a vote. I Jovita vote yes. Uh, Mary Fagan? Mary, yes. Susan Aranjo? And Trisha Wynn, welcome. Yes. Thank you. So the motion carries. Um, Marianne, would you take us to the next agenda, please? Thank you. Agenda item 8.4, discussion and possible action regarding whether to recommend approval, acceptance, or other actions for approved nursing programs. There are four areas under this. One is continuing approval of pre-licensure nursing programs. The second is pre-licensure nursing program unit adjustment or other changes. These are just changes to the curriculum that do not involve anything with enrollment. Number three is initial approval of advanced practice nursing programs. And number four is substantive changes to advanced practice nursing programs. So for everything under 8.4, the BRN staff have received and reviewed, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, all documentation from each program in the requests listed from 8.4.1 all the way through 8.4.10. Information on these requests is on the lists provided in your materials packet. Mm -hmm. These programs have all met board rules and regulations related to their requests and are therefore consent agenda items. This concludes my report. Of course, if you have questions about anyone, we can uh, bring them forward, but otherwise they are consent agenda items. Thank you. Any board members have any questions? Okay, I, um, I motion um, to carry this. Do I have a second? I'll second. Oh, thank you, Trisha. Um, BRN moderator, would you take us to public comment, please? Public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. I would like to take it to a vote. Um, I, Jovita Dominguez, votes yes. Marianne Fagan? Mary Fagan, yes. Susan Naranjo? Trisha Wen? Yes. Thank you. Marianne, um, would you take us to the next one, please? Agenda item 
discussion and possible action regarding acceptance. Excuse me. Regarding the acceptance of a final progr program progress report for an approved pre licensure nursing program. Um, this is. Um, Compton College Associate Degree Nursing Program. And um, in April of 2019, the board approved the separation of El Camino Compton Education Center from El Camino College. And um, Compton was its own program with quarterly reports. In your summary, your agenda item summary, there is a list uh, chronologically of all the reports and the visits that were made starting back in 2017 um, till to date forward. Um, the program is now um, in on their own. They have a permanent program uh, director position that is filled. They have an assistant director in place. Um, they're having monthly leadership meetings. Um, they have fa faculty development in progress. They have success strategies for their students um, reinstated. They had um, stopped those for a while, but they are reinstated and up and running. Um, they are also um, have a, um, a new curriculum, which is concept based. Their NCLEX pass rates have remained above 75. Um, and in fact, quarterly quarter two for this you know this year have just come out last week and their quarter two results were 82.35 um, this program is requesting to end their quarterly reports um, which is all they were still doing for the board at this time uh, donna shooty is the nursing education consultant um, her as well as the program director carol delilly and the college president keith curry are available for questions if you have any thank you Just to, um, this is Jovita. Um, uh, Marianne, after, um, if, if the motion, if we do motion to, um, to accept this um, and they don't do the quarterly, um, how often do they keep, or how do we reach out every, how often? Can you remind me? Sure, absolutely. So even though they're not doing, they would not be doing quarterly reports to the ELC and board, they would be everyone, every program, every nursing program in California has a nursing education consultant mm -hmm. who is in constant contact with them um, as needed. And we follow the NCLEX results as they come and we do, you know, their um, faculty approvals, their, their facility approvals. So we're in pretty, pretty okay. regular contact with them. And should there be any issues, um, Dr. Shudi would be available to consult with them. And our goal is always to um, to work alongside of them so that we catch anything prior to it getting to the point where it would have to come back. But if there was something that happened, um, like let's say this is not just them, any program that would have two years of less than 75 NCLEX pass rates or anyone that falls out of compliance for some reason that can't be easily rectified, we would bring those back to ELC and the board in order for to make you aware and... Um, for your decision. Is that helpful? Definitely. Thank you so much, Marianne. Um, sure. Any other members have questions? Then I would like to uh, make a motion to carry um, Compton Would you like home. me to restate it for you? Yes, yes, please. Thank you, Marianne. No problem. No problem. So the recommendation would be to accept the final program progress report for Compton College. Um, and that's really all we need to do is accept their final progress report. Thank you, Marianne. Um, I, I would like to um, carry the motion, please. Do I have a second? This is Mary, I'll second. Thank you, Mary. BRN moderator, would you take us to public comment? The comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. 
Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment. For members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Keith Curry would like to make a comment. One second, please. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Can you see me? Uh, no, we cannot see you. Would you like to be on camera? No, it's fine. So my name, my name is Keith Curry, President and CEO of Compton College. I've been with the organization since, um, in the CEO role since 2011. We've been at Compton College, or formerly El Camino College Compton Center, since 2005. I just wanted to, I wasn't going to make a comment, but I thought it's important for me to say this publicly is I do want to say thank you on behalf of Compton College and the Board of Trustees to the BRN, but more so importantly to Donna Schutte, who has been our consultant. Uh, she has been working with us steadily for the last couple of years to get us to this point. And it was a collaborative work. It wasn't just the work done at Compton with our associate dean, and our assistant director. It was a collaborative effort. And I think this could be a model for other colleges who have been through the accreditation issues who are also struggling with the, with the um, with BRN to see how the partnership works. And I wanna say thank you to the BRN, but more so thank you to Donna Schutte for her work and her support over the years. We have done a lot of amazing work, but it would not we would not be here if it wasn't for the partnership working together. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no other public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. And I would like to take it to a vote. I, Jovita Dominguez, votes yes. Mary Fagan? Susan Naranjo? Susan, yes. Trisha Wynn? Thank you. Um, Mary Ann, take us to the 8.6. Thank you so much. Agenda item 8.6, discussion and possible action regarding acceptance of a program progress report with discussion and possible action to address any performance gaps, including actions described in California Code of Regulation, Title 16, Section 1423.2, Subdivision A, for East Los Angeles College Associate Degree Nursing Program. So um, East Los Angeles College, or ELAC, is on warning status um, and is submitting their progress report, which is required each at each meeting. The, po the board paused enrollment in the fall of 2021 and in the spring of 22, the semester begins on February 7th. ELAC was approved in the November meeting in 2021 to enroll 30 students in, in this coming semester. So they are prepared and ready to start 30 students uh, up again in February, on February 7th. Um, updates, their NCLEX pass rate remains below 75. And as I said, there was, um, we, we look at yearly, but we have two quarterlies in so far. And so their quarter one was 77.8 and their quarter two is 54.55. And these are all listed for you for the past 10 years in, in their agenda item summary. Um, they're still working on one faculty position that is open for applications. Um, a second faculty position is under review and hopefully will be posted and the lab staff position remains open. Um, the program was at the time that I did the, um, the initial, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the continuing approval visit in 2019, they had six areas of compliance. Um, they only have one of the original left, which is their NCLEX pass rates. And um, they have one other one that came about in May of 2021, and that's related to the sufficiency of resources because they are still in the process um, of hiring because they're, they're still um, don't have enough resources as far as personnel goes. Um, I am their NEC and um, Brenda Chan is here as the program director should you have any questions regarding accepting their progress report for this meeting. Thank you. Hi, this is Jovita. I just want to say, um, I know it's been a hardship on them and um, I did thoroughly read their um, their advances and um, I noticed that they're taking strides and making um, 
really keeping on the students for making making sure that their future pass rates um, become more successful. And I wish them a lot of luck. I know it's hard to get instructors. Um, unfortunately, it's 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 hard everywhere. And I um, I wish them luck in the future to get more instructors. And thank you very much for making those um, positive advances. Does any other board members have questions? Question, um, Marianne, the materials uh, indicated that the Q1 um, NCLEX pass rate was 77.8 for, and then you mentioned Q2 was 50 something. I, that wasn't in the materials. Can you? Did no, because I, I just, I'm sorry, I apologize. We just got it um, this week. The materials are due quite a bit in advance. But the Q2 report came out this week to all programs, and they are at 54.55 for Q2. Again, when we look at the overall as far as when we um, when they have to, um, we start looking at them for, for um, one year or two year below 75, it's the annual report. But I do like to update when it's significant, like in this case, as they do their quarters. How long does it take from when you know significant changes or improvements are made that just in terms of the timing for you know students in the program that we actually see the results of from the NCLEX pass rate is is there sort of a rule of thumb there I don't know that there's a rule of thumb I think it depends on the program but it depends on what's happening this, in this case they have um, a brand new curriculum which I believe now they have they have um, and I can let Brenda clarify this for sure, but I think they either just have had everybody through the new curriculum or they're going to have in May everybody through the first curriculum. So that's um, a big significant jump because the people who came before them had the old curriculum. So there was a, a transition time as we go through. Um, and they did implement to um, have new curriculum implemented with those students, but again, it's an adjustment because of the two the two curriculums. Um, what I have seen, and I don't know if, um, Lori, you have any insight, um, what I have seen is several years, anywhere between two and, and five years to turn it around. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah, this is Lori. Um, I've seen similar things. It really just depends on what the problems are. If it's a simple problem like, um, they need a consistent program director in there. They get a new program director in. It takes about a year. And um, once relationships are built and trust is established, then we start to see improvements. If it's curriculum, it really has to go through the entire implementation of that curriculum, as well as any of the revamps that come. Because you can implement a curriculum, but then after you deliver it one time through, say, oops, we um, need to adjust or we need to change this or this would actually be better. It's that continuous plan, do, check, act kind of process where um, they're always evaluating it after they make a change and then continue to improve. Um, if it's something around resources, um, say they're short a faculty, if they get a faculty replacement and that faculty person is um, seasoned, um, that can be a relatively quick change. But if that's a brand new faculty that was never taught before, then it has to go through training and onboarding and getting them familiar with the classroom, et cetera. Um, and that can be a year or two. So um, it really just depends. What we typically see with our board is they do these um, deferring of action uh, to allow people to come back into compliance anywhere um, from one year to two year. Uh, this one has been um, a little bit more, but uh, we are seeing continued progress. We are seeing them continue to work towards uh, clearing their non-compliances, getting in various um, consultants, and um, just moving forward. But yes, that 54% for quarter two and then 77% for quarter one, if you're kind of running that on tally, that puts it in the mid-60s right now for a pass rate if this trend continues for the um, annual number. I just want to add too that um, Lori makes a good point. They did bring on, they already had a consultant helping faculty with the curriculum. Um, they have also brought on a fac, a, not a faculty, a consultant. 
um, to work on NCLEX in a, as an NCLEX expert to help with, you know, building that. Um, they also, when I did the continuing approval visit in 2019, they didn't really have a, a, a curriculum evaluation plan. And so they do have that now. So, you know, after each semester, they're evaluating, they're looking at stuff, they're taking feedback. Um, and as Lori was speaking, making adjustments as needed um, along the way. Would, and I don't know, Mark, can you elevate Brenda Chan just in case she would like to, um, to speak? She's the program director for the program, for the, yeah, the nursing program. Sorry. It's okay, no worries. Oh, there she is. Okay, she's elevated. Can everybody else go on mute if you're not speaking? I'm hearing weird noises in the background. Sorry. Thank you. Brent, are you there? Hi, this is Brenda. Can you hear me? I can. Thanks, Brenda. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, if I can just take a moment to really like to acknowledge um, our NEC, Dr. Maryam McCarthy, for her support, and also our college administration, President Roman and um, VP Arenas, Dean Laura Cantoon, and our consultants, um, Ms. Mio Minato and Dr. Diane Brickenridge. Um, they have worked um, very hard and helped us uh, move along. So just to answer the two comments um, I heard from the board members. Um, so our June 22 class will be the first class that we will have um, the brand new curriculum that we started in the fall 2020. So they will be um, the class that graduating with the new curriculum. And our spring 21 class, they have started on ATI for two semesters. And the ATI numbers is showing they have a 93% probability of passing NCLEX if they continue their work and uh, with the ATI um, platform. And we have experienced faculty teaching the content, so we are very um, hopeful that they will continue to do well. Um, also, as far as the um, Attrition rate is low right now, so we are hoping our students continue to finish. And um, again, another thing, another acknowledgement I want to do quickly is um, while we are on pause in fall 21, um, our Ally Health Department Director, um, Professor Monica Thurston, helped provide the EHR learning platform to our spring cohorts so that they can remain engaged. And so we've very thankful for her support in that. And we also have many scholarship um, donors to help our students. So we're just very um, fortunate to have all the support and we really appreciate the ELC members support as well. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Any other member, uh, board members have questions? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Well, so um, I've read through this progress report and I have seen that, you know, there are a couple of areas still of non-compliance, but so what's the follow-up now? We're going to approve or we're going to accept this program progress report like we did on the last one, though we know the last one was a final. So could you just explain to me going sure. forward now what, what Absolutely. we're doing? Absolutely. Thank and thank you so much, Tricia. Please ask questions because that's the way we're going to keep you up to date and it actually or get you up to date. And uh, it's also going to help the, the public understand, too, if anybody okay. has the same questions. So not a problem. So they have been on warning status since November of 2019. And at that time, they were they are required and still continue to be required unless something changes. They're required to put a progress note and be at every meeting, ELC and board meeting. Um, just for this reason, answer questions. So um, I'm in touch with them, you know, more, of course, but they're required to send in a report and um, we come and present at every at every meeting. 
Um, and like um, Loretta referred to, there's different things, you know, we're definitely going to accept. Um, they can't come off of warding status until they've cleared those non-compliances. Um, but then at that time, um, when we get to that point, I'm definitely going to bring them forward and um, we'll look at, you know, continuing approval or um, maybe deferred if there's anything else that's still anybody's worried about. Does Thank that help, Tricia? Much. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. And may I add another comment? Sure, go ahead, Brenda. Thank you. Um, so this is the latest from the Mountain Measurement NCLEX report. Um, just want to share with the board members that um, all our candidates who have taken the test between April to September 2021, um, they are meeting and exceeding the passing performance benchmark in all the eight client categories. And we have significant improvement in the categories of psychosocial integrity and also basic care and comfort. And also another piece of information I'd like to share is um, we apply for the Song Brown grant and after the application has been evaluated, it shows that 54% of our graduates are working in the RN shortage areas. And we also have a significant 59% um, of our current students are underrepresented minorities. So ELAC is serving the much needed population in achieving the health outcomes and also providing education to a diverse learning community. So with that, thank you all for your support and giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to, um, this is Jovita, I'd like to take um, the motion to carry. Uh, Mary, uh, Marianne, can you, um, could you state the motion, please? Sure. The motion would be to recommend acceptance of the program progress report for East Los Angeles College. Thank you. Uh, so I uh, motion it. Would anyone second? I'll second it. Is that Trisha or? Yes, Trisha. Thank you, Trisha. Um, BRN moderator, please take us to public comment. Public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. So I'd like to take it to a vote. I Jovita votes yes. Mary Fagan. Susan Naranjo. Susan, yes. Trisha Wynn. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Mary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. Moving on to agenda item 8.7. Discussion and possible action regarding whether to recommend continuing approval or other action for approved pre-licensure nursing programs. Um, we have two, 8.7.1, which is Los Angeles Trade Tech Associate Degree Nursing Program. Um, Los Angeles Trade Tech um, had a, re re a regular scheduled um, approval that took place in November of 2021. Their enrollment pattern is 40 students twice a year for an annual enrollment of 80 students. Their current enrollment at the time of the visit was 143 students. Their NCLEX pass rates have remained above 75. However, 
if you'll look at the list they are dropping in 1819 it was 87.88 in 1920 it was 80.95 in 21 or 2021 it was 78.87 and then quarter one they were in nine at 92.31 and in quarter two they're at 75 percent Los Angeles Trade Tech was found to be in noncompliance with BRN regulations in three areas. Um, the first area is in total curriculum plan, having a, a total curriculum plan in place to evaluate the program ongoing um, with adjustments as needed. Um, the second one is sufficient resources. They have insufficient faculty, staff, and support service personnel. Most of this is related to vac vacated positions over the past um, uh, well, it's been five years since we made a visit. So vacated positions in the last five years that haven't been haven't been replaced. And then the program director, the other one, the third one is the program director should have su su sufficient time to administer the program. And at the time of the visit, that was not the case. She is the only she was the only um, OB faculty. She was the OB content expert. She did all of the um, all of the clinical placements. Um, uh, she had several things um, on her, her plate. Um, most of all of these compliances are rated, related, to, well, I shouldn't say most, all of them. Um, my, my opinion is that their total program evaluation is not able to be, or total curriculum plan is not able to be done because of lack of personnel, um, which also affects, you know, the whole overall outcome of what can be done. Um, and the, the program director having time to work on that kind of stuff. Um, I am their NEC. The program director, the dean, and the college president are all available for questions. And um, BRN moderator, if you could please um, elevate Paula Moorfield, Carrie Willard, and Katrina Vanderwool. And I will open it up to the um, committee for questions. This is Hobita. Um, I I um, commend them for having passing scores for the um, for the NCLEX, even though their staff was um, either retired or moved on. But um, I I believe. Um, I don't know who I can ask this question. They are looking for um, reinforcements, right? For more faculty. I'm sorry, I was muted. Muted, <laughs> Paula. Will you please um, speak to that for us? I don't know. Um, Mark, were we able to find Paula? Is Paula Johnson, Paula Morfield? Yes, thank you. Okay. My apologies, you're right. Her, her email is different than her, um, yes. Okay. Paula, go ahead. I have Paula, I have elevated Paula, Katrina, and Carrie Willard. Okay, Paula, are you able to take yourself off mute? If not, Carrie or Katrina, can either one of you? I the wrong Katrina on. I'm not um, part oh. of the committee. Okay, um, just we don't question. have Katrina on. If you could elevate instead uh, Dr. Mike Reese, who is who's listening into this conversation, that would be wonderful. Um, uh, this is Carrie Willard. Um, I am the Dean of the area, and we are absolutely committed to uh, bringing in more full-time faculty. Uh, we completely understand the challenges of, of running a department uh, of this size and serving our students uh, with the number that we currently have. And um, we will be, um, we, we are in the planning stages right now to um, hire two additional faculty uh, with the goal to have them uh, up in teaching for the fall. Uh, we have also um, made sure to go out and, and search for additional adjunct faculty members and we have encouraged um, 
uh, some of the nurses at the hospitals that we work at to apply for those positions as well, such that we have a larger adjunct pool available as well, because we have um, very high loads for many of the faculty. Uh, so we are absolutely um, committed to increasing the number of full-time faculty uh, with the hope of getting uh, two of them immediately and then to continue to uh, grow that full-time faculty base um, over the next couple of semesters. Um, Carrie, do you mind letting us know where you, where nursing is on the priority list? Um, as far I, as, you know, the hiring process that we talked about, we know that it's, it can be long and, um, uh, it, you know, it's based on the entire college. Can you give us a feel for where the priority is on that? Um, in, in terms of the priority list for the college that was uh, determined by the faculty senate, one of the positions is extremely high, the other one is not. However, our president has the ability to alter that list and due to the um, importance of this program and the importance of maintaining uh, the approval of the BRN, uh, that position is being elevated. Um, we, we understand completely the importance of getting two new faculty members, and it is absolutely our plan uh, to move forward with, with hiring two new faculty members uh, over the course of this, this coming semester. We don't have the explicit approvals yet just because we're, we're still, it's still early in the game uh, for this semester, uh, but um, my, ex my expectation is that we will have the full approval to hire two new faculty members over the course of this semester. Thank you for clarity. Thank you. This is this is Mary. I, if I'm uh, reading the report correctly, it looks like that it says that there are 12 full time faculty minimum needed just to replace those who have left or retired. And you currently have seven full time faculty. So if we need well mary if i could clarify that that when i wrote that in that was based on my conversations with the the current faculty so five years ago when we were there the, and i apologize i wasn't there five years ago i was not the nec at that time but five years ago when they were there there were 12 faculty at that time and so as we were talking through at the visit the 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 main focus was that we need to be we're so far from that we only have seven now we need 12 uh, or that's what we had and we seem to be, you know, not so stressed and all that. And so that was where that came from. But you're right there. If they were to get to 12, which is not under our jurisdiction, it's their choice. Um, there would be five positions. And I believe, well, I know that Carrie just said they're committed to two this year. And, and I just have a question because I went back and looked at the 2016 visit report and I don't I don't know where 12 came from because what I saw was that there was were a total of 10 nine plus the director again just to clarify this was from my conversations with faculty um, and nursing administration so if I mis misstated it and it was it was 10 I apologize so thank you what is the vacancy rate for faculty it's hard to understand from what I'm reading and hearing what do you mean by the vacancy rate? The budgeted number of faculty and the number of faculty that's required in order to be successful compared to what we have. And then it looks like there's two potentially positions approved to be recruited for this semester, but we have all these students that are gonna be there with only seven faculty. I'm worried about that. Carrie, yeah. I'll let you speak to that. Um, we, uh, we have similar concerns that because we want to make absolutely certain that we have sufficient faculty to meet the needs of all of our students. Um, as, as I stated earlier, um, with, with our planned hiring for this semester, that will actually take us up to what we had had, um, uh, five years ago. We would like to increase that because we know that there, um, are many more challenges in clinicals, for example in terms of the numbers of students that are allowed to be in those those courses and, and that kind of thing. So we are absolutely committed to, to raising this number and our goal is to get to 12. Um, over the next couple of semesters, our goal is to, in this, this upcoming semester, to identify two additional full-time faculty members. 
uh, which would bring us to the point that we were five years ago, and then to continue to expand beyond that point as well, uh, because we know that the nature of teaching in the nursing discipline is changing. Um, and so we really do need additional faculty members uh, to make sure that we're able to meet the needs of our students. In addition, we are looking to expand our adjunct pool um, because even though that is not the ideal way to, to run the program, um, we, we do currently have some amazing adjuncts and we would like to increase that pool as well such that we have more individuals that are trained and also as positions become available, um, there will be um, more individuals who are familiar with our program. And do you Thank feel you. that you have enough faculty now? So you're with the seven because you're going to be recruiting to admit an additional 40 students for this semester. Um, I'm going to defer that question to Paula and, and, and just share how, how the uh, scheduling is going. Uh, we we uh, we are we do have challenges um, with that because it's difficult finding adjunct instructors. Hi, this is I'm sorry I couldn't get my mute off before. Um, this is Paula Morfield Johnson, um, and I um, yes um, we still do have challenges um, as far as um, faculty is concerned um, with our load being decreased and our um, adjuncts not able to take on the load that they could take on prior that is causing us to have um, more of a need um, in addition to um, some of the clinical sites have decreased the amount of students that can go per rotation um, so that is also caused us to need to have more faculty as well um, and um, so yes we you know, yeah, we need faculty. <laughs> I, I don't. And Mary, just for clarity, <clears throat> because Paula, the program director, has been carrying a full load as faculty, it's kind of a gray area whether we count her as faculty or not. I did not count. I mean, because she has 100% release time, she should be administrative and not counted in faculty. So that's where my numbers came, which may be a little bit different because she she probably is quote unquote faculty for the college. And the, so it's a difference in how you might look at it from a BRN perspective versus a college perspective. I'm just worried about admitting another 40 students given the, the staffing shortages. We have admitted our um, 40 students that are, are already in our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in our winter session, our pre-nursing um, class um, for the spring. Um, and yeah. yeah. When did that, when does that start, Paula? It started on the 4th. That class okay. started on the 4th. January 4th? And then, yeah, and spring starts um, February 7th, but they have this class before they go into the spring semester. It's like a pre-nursing class, but they're already a nursing. I have a question that kind of dovetails with Mary's, and that is, um, Mary Ann, thank you for the chart on attrition. Uh, is that, uh, again, without having context, is that a um, reasonable attrition rate? It seems maybe high to me, but um, I don't really know. We, um, I don't, there's nothing that's like hardcore, but we try to, to um, say that any, as long as it's below 25%, Okay. Um, and the reason that it's in there is there's certain things in every agenda item summary, Tricia, that we want to put there because they're things that have commonly been asked, um, like the price of the, the you know, the, the cost of the program, mm -hmm. the attrition, the um, NCLEX pass rates, the enrollment patterns. Those are things that are commonly asked. So there's things that we commonly put in there. That is not, that was not necessarily a problem for them, nor in noncompliance. Although in 2018, 2019, Nineteen and 2019, 2020, they had over, they had 30 percent and 36 percent, right. which does seem to speak to the shortage of resources. Right. Thank you. I think that also some of the attrition rate speaks to the student population that that we are serving. Um, the college makes a a, a, a strong um, push 
to to give students who may not be able to get into some of the other programs the opportunities to come in who are qualified to become nurses and many of them have financial issues other kinds of family issues um, that that do pull them out of the program so that attrition rate is not necessarily reflective of the resources as much as it is reflective of the particular student population that we absolutely wish to serve because our community needs these nurses, needs people out of our community to be part of the nursing staff in our community. And so even though we recognize that in, in um, accepting some, you know, many of these students who have some challenges, we may have some higher attrition. We also are achieving an extremely important goal of getting them into the hospitals, bringing our community into our hospitals. That's fair. And Thank Carrie, you. I just want to add to that, um, just because we have heard, and I know you're nutritious, so you haven't heard it before, um, but we've talked about many times, um, Los Angeles Trade Tech is part of the Seven Sisters in the LACCD. So that whole program, I mean, we've heard we the same kind of population, um, in my opinion, is is the same population that's served by ELAC, who we just had, had earlier. It's been served by LA um, City College, who um, again their past their they've come a long way in improving theirs. Um, that's that district is committed to serving this type of students, and therefore our expectation um, does not change because our regulation says you need to provide resources and provide the education needed for these students to be successful. So as much as I do appreciate, and they do have a waiting list where people, you know, they'll stay on the list because they know they'll get in. Sometime they're going to get in. It doesn't matter anything else besides that they're on the list. So uh, students spoke to me strongly about they stayed on the list because they knew they were going to get in, even if it took four years or three years or mm -hmm. however long it took. Um, however, uh, from a BRN perspective, that does not dilute the fact of what you need to provide for your students as far as preparing them um, to be professional nurses in the workforce. Thank you. Yeah, and I would think that, um, you know, with students that are being admitted that have other challenges, the, all the more reason it's important to have perhaps even additional faculty and support um, to help these students. And I, I am concerned about the decreasing NCLEX pass rate to bring students in without the faculty resources that they need and have in 25%, looks like we're going that direction, fail to pass the NCLEX after doing the program. And, um, that's, you know, that's not serving these, um, these students, um, you know, giving them the program that they need in order to be successful. What are our options here? I feel like um, this program probably needs to have the same level of scrutiny that we've been, um, you know, oversight that we've uh, had for ELAC. So the um, the options are um, they cannot have, as you know, approval, full approval, because they have areas of noncompliance. However, their approval, and I just want to make this clear, because some people think that they lose their approval. You don't lose your approval. You're just either on deferred status, which means that we're, we're waiting and watching and working with you to get to where you need to be in all these noncompliances and getting them up to speed. Or like ELAC, as you spoke, they're on warning status um, with the intent to close. Um, I always, we always try to ask for there to be some kind of follow up on record with the committee and the board as far as how often they're going to give progress reports that kind of thing. Um, and as we saw, you know, Compton did them for um, several years on a quarterly basis. ELAC does them every meeting. Um, it, it's totally up to you, but those are the, the venues. Or of course, as you spoke of, anything you guys are, anything related to um, admission or enrollment or that kind of stuff. The difference here is that they've already enrolled, it, enrolled for spring because we're very close to the spring semester. So it would be probably a great hardship to, um, for mostly for the for the students and for the school to um, do anything as far as enrollment at this point. Is there anything, Lori, for clarification? My understanding from um, Paula was that the students have already started. 
Um, so it's not just that they've enrolled, but that they actually started um, on the 4th of this month. Is that correct? Well, they started their pre, yes, they've yes. started their okay. pre. The yeah. official yeah. semester starts and in so, February, but yes. Yeah, they've already started in a in entry class. Yes. So yes. for further clarification, um, Mary, the board can choose to defer taking any action at this point. Um, when you defer taking any action at this point, it allows for the school to continue to work to clear up the areas of noncompliance. Um, when the board votes to defer taking any action, what they typically do is say, I will defer um, action at this point. We would like um, quarterly progress notes and return to the full board in one year. Um, and that that's a typical motion that is made um, for a very close kind of follow up. The difference between LA Trade and ELAC is that LA Trade still has passing, um, uh, still has a compliance with our NCLEX pass rates that are above 75% and the attrition rate is low um, and that they are working to clear this up. With ELAC, that was a 10 year pattern. Um, and so that is a, a little bit different. If you put, choose to vote to say we will put the school on a warning status with intent to remove program approval, then um, what that does is uh, put them in the same situation as ELAC where, um, again, they're not closed. We're not requiring a teach out plan and we're not stopping enrollments, um, but it is much, it is a, a um, an actual board motion versus just deferring that the board has taken any, any action at this point other than to continue to work with them for the next year and get progress notes. Um, with any of these, even if you were to defer action on continuing approval, you could make a motion that would um, have them return to the board prior to accepting students into the next class so that you can get a progress report on that. Or you could look to um, decreasing enrollments for the next enrollment. Um, various things that that can be done. You could also make a motion that you said, um, you know, by looking at this and looking, I, I'm not sure the NEC gets a form called an EDPP 11 that um, can project class size, clinical size, and instructor need that is filled out by the school. You could um, defer action until you saw that. And then when you did receive that at the board meeting, you could make a motion that says that um, you would like them to hire in to hire in three staff or more than the two staff, whatever you wanted to decide at that point um, that you feel would be adequate resources. So um, the board has the ability to do uh, a multitude of things just depending on what your focus is. Um, Lori, um, this is Jovita. Lori, so if we choose to, um, it's not speaking, I agree that it's, it's different that Los Angeles Trade Tech is in a different position than ELAC, but um, I, I, I would like to see, my question is, putting them on a deference um, for next, for a year, um, is it possible that we can tap into um, some of the options that you said you recommended um, option? Um, I like the idea of of um, of deferring it for a year, but at the same time, maybe also, is it possible to also add that we would like um, them to come um, to our meeting before accepting um, to plan to accept more students so that way we have an idea if the if this is becoming an issue with placement in clinicals. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. I think um, if you're if you're wondering about the faculty resources, this is a committee meeting, and we can bring it to full board. And by the time we got to full board, which would be the February board meeting, you could um, the NEC could have an EDPP eleven, which is that faculty student plan. And you guys can clearly see what the resources is where it's a faculty to student makeup. Um, I don't know that you would have to wait until they're ready to enroll in the next part in the next group. I think that that's something that could be brought forward to the board meeting in February and you guys could as a full board um, 
make a recommendation at that point, whether that would be to defer any action or defer action as they increase their staffing with a board recommendation of as uh, minimum amount of faculty, whatever you guys decided on after looking at that report. Um, with with having them come back in front of the board prior to doing their enrollments, which you have to take into consideration is the enrollment cycle. Um, LA Trade has not asked to increase enrollment or change enrollment. They have an enrollment approval of 40 students twice a year. So they enroll in spring and fall and it's 40 students and that's what they've been able to maintain and support um, for a long time. This has not, even with the decreased faculty, the faculty have taken overload assignments, the program director, the assistant director have stepped up, they're coming in and they're, um, they're teaching. It does not take away the fact that they need more faculty, but currently when you're looking at the standpoint of uh, protection, this, if you liken it to a nursing diagnosis, this would be an at-risk diagnosis versus an actual diagnosis. So they're at risk of having harm come to the public that we're protecting, which would be the students at this point, where the students could potentially no longer progress in their program because they don't have faculty to teach them. Um, but it, it's not an actual diagnosis yet because the students do have faculty. They are able to progress. They are not seeing um, a, a detriment to their progression and graduation and success measures as of yet. So what the board could do is seek additional information, have them come back in February um, and decide on an action to do at that point. So you could recommend a deferred status and to allow more information to be brought forward to the February board meeting, where then the board could make a decision whether or not they want to um, make a motion to uh, uh, remove program, uh, put them on warning status to remove program approval or to defer any action. Um, with these continuing approval visits, because they are routinely scheduled, they're typically on a five year. Um, approval visit if they're not accredited. We did change to an eight and a 10 year um, for uh, programs that are approved to be in alignment with the CSA recommendation and the legislator request. So with all of that, many things take into consideration. And the, the one that Dr. Marianne McCarthy said here was that the approval status of this program stays. We have not removed their program status, but we are saying, hey, there, there is some non-compliance issues working with their NEC under the direction of the board. These are the items that we would like you to do. So hopefully that helped to clarify a bit. Yes, thank you. Um, so um, Dr. Marianne um, McCarthy, would I, I, um, I feel, and please board, um, if you have any questions, um, it sounds like we probably need to bring it to the February. Um, I don't want to make a decision um, just, you know, um, because it sounds like we have a lot of questions still. Does everybody agree? And maybe we can change, we can um, defer this for February and um, also get more information. Vita, they would be going to February anyway. Right, because oh. they have to go from ELC to board. They they can't skip the board, so they're going anyway. The question is, what recommendation, if any, do you want to make to the to the board? Do you want to go forward with a recommendation, um, or do you want to just send it forward as it is for full? And and I do remember the last time we went to a board meeting, some one of the board members did ask about you know was there a recommendation. Um, or not. And there was some that didn't have recommendations. They just moved forward. So I don't know where this committee wants to stand. Yes, Tricia. Well, thank you so much. I, I feel like I don't have enough information to really make a recommendation at this point. I mean, it's clearly a troubled program, but it's serving a population that is important. And I, I really am concerned that we not hurt the community. Um, you know, who is will be taking advantage of these students when they, you know, get through the program. So what I'd like to ask is that we, you know, just take a breather and maybe have staff write up some recommendations for the board 
that we could really, you know, spend a little time exploring because, I mean, I would like the Los Angeles Trade Tech Associate degree nursing program to, you know, get reinvigorated, to do what they need to do to move forward. So I don't want to do anything that we're going to throw a wrench in that. But at the same yeah. time, I feel like we need to elevate. Uh, well, I just want you to know too, Tricia, that we, we as board staff cannot make recommendations. We can oh, simply bring you. information to you. We cannot make recommendations. It's out thank of you. our it's out of our purview. I'm very Thank sorry, you. which is okay. why, you know, myself and, and Loretta have come in and made, you know, suggestions of what has been done in the past. Yeah. Um, and we can do that um, and, and let you know what history has been and, and what we have seen in the past. Yeah. We cannot make recommendations. Thank you. But that would even be helpful just again to provide context. So thank you. May, may I speak? Of course. Oh, thank you. Right, um, Carrie. I would like to just advocate for deferral for the program. The, uh, Los Angeles Trade Tech is absolutely committed to this program. And if if the the way that we if what we need to do to move forward is hire three faculty members, we'll we'll figure out a way to do it. I, I, you know, we we absolutely value this program. The, we are committed to this program and and to our community, um, and our students really appreciate what we are able to give to them. Um, we have many, many kinds of programs. Um, I know that for all of the first year students, uh, Dr. Cynthia Ashby um, has extra time. She provides extra hours, is, is intrusive with these students to ensure that they are getting what they need. Yes, I realize that, that we may not have the number of full-time faculty members that we need, but the faculty members that we do have are exceptional and um, really go out of their way to to provide the kind of leadership and the kind of instruction and the kinds of support that these students need to be successful. And I know when I was at the, uh, the pinning for the last class, I heard from students just again and again how valuable that was from on the part of the faculty. And so I just want to, to make very, very clear how passionate this, the, the faculty are in this program and how much we as an administration care about continuing to provide this opportunity for students because we think that it is, is, is invaluable. Uh, we are working right now to, uh, to meet the, the needs of the program. Uh, not only in faculty, but in all of the other uh, uh, areas as well, and are, are making progress uh, towards that. And so I, I just want to advocate strongly for a deferral because I truly believe that this program is, is, is you know, poised to just come out even stronger. Thank you so much for that, Carrie. I do want to add and agree with Carrie that when I spoke to faculty and worked with them and talked with students, it is a very strong faculty and they are so committed. Um, like Hovita said earlier, I'm not sure how they're maintaining their NCLEX pass rates with such a small faculty. I don't know how they made it through COVID with such a small faculty, but my biggest concern is sustainability. How long can we honestly sustain this? Because they, they are doing amazing things. They are doing above and beyond, but how much longer until exhaustion sets in? Um, and so, but, but she's right. They do have an amazing core faculty. Amazing. Um, this is Jovita. I definitely support what you just said, Marianne. And um, it's, like I said, it's, it, it's great that they've made these strides, but I want them to continue serving the community. And um, I am, I think um, I'd like if you can um, do, I don't want to do the motion as it stands um, because I, I want them to succeed. Um, maybe if you can help me with a motion to defer because I really would like okay. this, this, this program to definitely succeed. I'm like I said, I'm like commend them for their numbers. And, and, me too. Um, and I'm going to work with them through that process and whatever we decide. So yes. yes. Are you and, and I definitely support and don't want to do a motion and it fail. So I'd like to, if you could help me with the, sure. uh, a motion to defer so they can continue working um, in a positive, okay. you know, well, they are positive, but mm -hmm. in a stronger um, position. Okay. So let me see if I can give you something as an example of what I've seen in, in the past. 
and then you can um, help help me help you can tweak it however you prefer. So it would be a recommendation to defer. Um, and I, I, I got to remember the word. I don't know if it's defer status because we're not really deferring their approval. We're just deferring the decision. So it's a recommendation to defer um, the decision on the continuing approval of this program. Um, and we want to do something with progress reports. So you probably want to have whatever you want, quarterly, um, per meeting, whatever you want with progress reports to be turned into me so that I can review and present. And then it, part of those progress reports could be what Lori is talking about as far as the EDPP 11 um, to show the ratio of students and, and staff. And it's also related to facilities because right now facilities, well, they have been for years, but with COVID, they're even more going down and down and down as far as how many students they can take. So that affects the number of faculty as well. So it would be something like recommend deferred uh, deferment of approval decision with quarterly progress reports to include the EDPP 11. I, I would help you with that. Yes, um, please, it please, is. please, 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 <laughs> please. Thank so you. We're not, de we're not deferring decision. What our board does is our board has a board action. That's why we do board action letters, et cetera. Thank you. So the action is to defer taking any action or the action would be to grant them continued approval or the action would be to make the motion to put them on warning status with intent to remove program approval. So the motion here, if this is what Huvitan wants to make, would be a motion to defer action to the full board in February with a request to the board to, with the request to the school to provide the board with an updated EDPP 11 to uh, outline resources and staff and students. And then you could require quarterly progress notes and have them return to the board um, at, in one year or something to that effect past deferring the action at this point, because this is just a recommendation to our board. It is not a board action. That board action won't happen until February. So that hopefully that explains it a bit more. Um, Laurie, thank you so much. Yes, yes. that is my intention. Okay. So then, okay, so if Hobita, I have it right, restate. Yes, thank you, Marianne. Well, tell me, you keep an, an ear on this to make sure it's right. Same thing with the committee, please. So, the recommendation to the board in February that we're going to put on the agenda is to defer action to the full board in February with the EDPP 11 to look at resources and faculty versus students, um, quarterly progress reports and return to the board in one year. Well put. Return Thank to you. The EL, return to the ELC board. I'm only saying, going to say board, but you have to go through the process, ELC and board. Yes, <laughs> thank you. And is I'm, that right, Lori? It is. That is correct, Marianne. Thank okay. you. I'd like to make that motion. Would anybody second that? Thank you, Mary. Um, BRN moderator, take us to, or um, I believe, do I go to... Um, Public comment, Public comment, or do I wait? Public comment. Thank you. Public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Ethel P would like to make a comment. One second, please. Thank you, Go ahead. members of the board. I appreciate your movement um, I'm a Southern California nurse and I work in a hospital, a very busy hospital at that, and we are dying. We need nurses and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to the schools. Um, part of the issues, I think, and I, this is just my personal comment, I have been a uh, nurse educator for an LVM program down here in Southern California and I've also been on the other side as a 
as a nurse educator uh, working with schools to try and get them clinical time. As a case manager, we often precept um, nursing students. I have precepted several myself. And the reality is, is that hospitals um, are trying to keep as many people out so that they don't get COVID during these times. But at the same time, they're also looking at, you know, you're looking at hospitals that want the magnet status and they want only BSN uh, students to be coming into their hospital. So that's another challenge. And I would like to see um, the BRN give more support to these trade schools because coming from a Latino background and, and, and coming from pretty much the projects myself, I had to go to associate and then to BRN, you know, to BSN and then to masters. So it is difficult, uh, a young woman or, or young man with children trying to go to school. There has to be another way to teach, like, you know, the way they're doing it now through Zoom. And there, there has to be, so these young people can actually get the education they need and take care of their families. That's the reality. So I'd like to, to for you to put that in the back of your mind going forward into the next decade is to help people actually, um, you know, become nurses by giving them more tools, more technology um, and, and easier access. And also to help these programs that are a bridge to go for their BSN, because that's where we're going. We're going, hospitals um, want to hire only BSN or BSN preferred. Um, so please help them, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mary Wickman would like to make a comment. Go ahead. And um, I guess I'm still muted. No, go ahead. We okay. can hear you. Um, and uh, first of all, I want to thank the board for the thoughtful discussion that I've been a part of as a listener. I, I really appreciate it. but. I'm here on behalf of CACN, the California Association of Colleges of Nursing. I'm a past president. And um, I just wanted to make a comment about the faculty shortage. The faculty shortage is alive and well in California and nationally. And it's related to several factors. One is an aging and retiring faculty. And then also, more importantly, I think for this discussion is non-competitive salaries with practice positions. And so, you know, a lot of the qualified nurses are accepting a salary at a hospital with a higher salary than at an academic institution. And so what I'd like to ask is, are competitive salaries being offered to your um, applicants? I, I think that's important for the school to consider. And another thought I have, I have a, I've been a part of a master's program that produces educators. A thought would be for the schools to establish some sort of relationship with an associated um, CSU or private school in the area who has such a program where they'd be able to recruit faculty from those schools. Um, so that's the end of my comment. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no other public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. And I'd like to take it to a vote. I Jovita vote yes. Mary Fagan? And Susan Naranjo? Susan, yeah. Trisha Wynn? Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, continuing with 8.7, discussion and possible action regarding whether to recommend continuing approval or other action for an approved pre-licensure nursing program. 8.7.2 is Victor Valley College Associate Degree Nursing Program. Um, Victor Valley College also went through a continuing approval visit, a regularly scheduled one, um, as Lori spoke to, every five years-ish. Um, and it was completed in November of 21. Um, at that time, Victor Valley was found to be in noncompliance in 16 areas. These noncompliances were related to following areas. So 16 of them separate, but if we grouped them together under noncompliances that have similar um, relationships, um, they're under these categories, military LVN and, and previous credit. So that was one category that had some curriculum, had some um, administration and organization of the nursing program, had some resources, 
faculty responsibilities, and student participation. So as of today, um, the program has rectified seven of those 16 noncompliances and, and are now compliant with all regulations related to military LVN and previous um, credit. Um, they've also rectified three of the five curriculum noncompliances. So that's where we get that they're, um, they're down. They've, they've corrected some and they're down to seven. Um, Donna Ship is their nursing education consultant. Uh, the program director and the vice president um, are available for any questions. Thank you so much. Any board members have questions? I see Susan shaking her head, no. Okay, perfect. Then um, I would like, uh, Marianne, can you help me with the motion? Um, well, my question is, do you want to hear from the program? That's my only question before. Ye yes. Okay. I would appreciate so, that. Mark, if you could um, bring up um, Teresa CC and Todd Scott, please, um, to the panel. And Donna Ship, is there any C? And Teresa, whenever you get elevated and you have your mic, you can go ahead if you would like to say anything. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Wonderful. <clears throat> um, I just want to just make a comment about the administrative support that we've been given and some of the things that have gone on since Donna was here, November 2nd and 3rd. Um, we are down uh, four faculty positions, but the administration gave us one full-time temp in the fall that will continue into the spring and another full-time temp that will continue into the spring. Um, we have two other uh, positions um, that we will fill later, but right now um, we just finished getting three interview committees together to look at three full-time faculty. So we should be, uh, having those uh, three separate committees uh, get together and decide uh, the questions we're going to ask the candidates, et cetera. So we are working on, on that diligently. Um, we also have a former faculty, and I don't want to say formal, meaning they're not here anymore. They are, but they're teaching allied health, who has been coming over and helping orient and fill in some time as well. Um, he is still approved by the board, so um, and he's still faculty at the college. Uh, we just got our NCLEX quarter October through December 2021. We were 100% again. And um, I, I attribute a lot of that to the amount of lab that our students get. They get 240 hours between going to clinical, going to skills lab, sim lab, and remediation lab. Well, actually, remediation lab isn't even counted in that. That would be extra. So, you know, they get a lot of hands-on and sim and clinical that I think makes a big difference, you know, in those NCLEX results. Our retention over the past five years has been less than 25%, except one year it was 26, and we accounted for that with a, a new program that uh, they're trying to put in uh, uh, what was called uh, 16 for success. And that was 16 students being paid for by um, a foundation of one of the hospitals. And that program is no longer with us. They've moved it to some other hospitals. I'm, I'm sorry, some other schools of nursing. Um, so we fully uh, intend to keep our retention down low. Thank you, uh, Teresa. I appreciate, I appreciate okay. that. I'm going to let them go ahead and make a, um, um, uh, a motion and then if you have more comments absolutely we're going to come back to you okay. and uh, and dr scott do you want to make a motion uh Hobita? yes i would um thank you though i appreciate the information she gave us could you help me with the motion marianne what would you like to do because the you know again this is a, a a program that went through a continuing approval visit, just like the one prior, Los Angeles Trade Tech, mm -hmm. and um, they have non-compliances. And um, so again, we can defer action like you just did to the board and, and we could do very similar things. Um, 
Toby did this. It just depends on what you want to do. I'm um, sorry, Mary. Mary, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I would base uh, defer. I don't. This doesn't look like the things at Victor Valley College are as um, as dire. Certainly not in terms of NCLEX pass rates and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think given all those um, non-compliance um, areas of non-compliance, it makes sense to defer from my perspective. Thank you, Mary. Um, I would, um, I agree. And uh, Marianne, if you can help me with the um, language and maybe we can help de um, defer the, um, the vote. Sure, sure. So the, in this case, we would be recommending again, mm -hmm. deferred action mm -hmm. to the full board in February. Yeah. Um, with um, quarterly progress reports and again, return to the committee and board in one year. Thank that you. Work? Thank you. Yes. Um, I would like to make that motion. Do I have a second? No, I don't think so. Mary, think, is that you? Is that you, Mary? It's Trisha, I think. Oh, Tricia, thank you. Perfect. Then I'd like to. Hang on um, one second. Hang on one second, Jovita. Teresa, can you, do you have something else you want to say, or would you like to go on mute? Because we can hear your conversation. I apologize. Uh, just uh, one more thing. The sure. faculty has been here the winter semester rewriting the entire curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, they actually had started right before COVID and worked on it for a year. And so they're picking up and, and doing that. So I just wanted you to know that they're addressing that. Um, and we've also addressed the student participation as well. So just so you know, we're, we're, we're moving on fast. Great, great. Thank you for keep working and thank you for keeping um, Donna Ship, your nursing education consultant updated. Thank you. Uh, so um, I did get a second from Tricia. Uh, BRN moderator, would you take us to public comment? The comment now, I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give you reminders or time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Thank you, yes. Um, I'd like to um, take it for a vote. I, Jovita, votes yes. Mary Fagan? Mary Fagan, yes. Susan Naranjo? And Trisha Wynn? Yes. Perfect, thank you so much. Mary Ann, please. Agenda item 8.8. .8. Discussion and possible action regarding the acceptance of a substantive change to an approved program. This is for California State University Bakersfield Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program. They are requesting an enrollment increase. So um, the current enrollment that they have at CSU Bakersfield is 60 students annually. And um, they are requesting to increase by 16 students um, in the fall of 22, and then increase again by 16 students in the fall of 24. And so, you know, the first year they'll get a, they'll be up to uh, 76 total, and then two years later they'll be at 92, and then they want to stay at 92 moving forward. Um, as far as data goes, recent regional forecasts indicate that there is substantial variation across regions with projective shortages in the Central Valley, Central Coast, and the Bay Areas. Um, Bakersfield is in the Central Valley. 
the um, information that um, I looked at agrees with the information that um, was presented by the um, program. I am the NEC for this program, um, and I'm Debbie Wilson, the program director, is also available. If you could elevate her, please, Mark. Um, she is also available to answer any questions. I had a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, do you see any, you know, significant downside to um, allowing this increase? I mean, just reading the background information, it seemed like they're doing well, and there is a nursing shortage, uh, especially in the Bay, uh, the Central Valley. Um, you know, it seems like this would, I mean, from my ignorant point of view, it seemed like this is a, a you know, kind of almost a no brainer, but I, and I read your report and didn't really see a lot of red flags. So. Correct. They submitted everything to me for, um, and that's another good thing for us to let you know, before we put them on the agenda, they have to have everything that they need. Like they have to sh prove to us that they have the resources they need to do this. Um, otherwise we, we can't, we wouldn't bring them forward. The, the thing that's a, that has been a big um, discussion over several years, Tricia, has been um, the impact of increased nursing students to particular areas. Um, but it is very um, specific to regions and areas. And so that's why we're providing uh, that we ask the programs to provide data that supports their their enrollment increase. And then we look at our, our data, the stuff that is, um, you know, available to us and, and speaks to uh, mostly our, our data from UCSF um, to see where it is and see if it comes together. This, this meeting for the first time, we have added that, that, that comment at the bottom that will tell you whether or not what we found agrees with what mm -hmm. they have. And if it does vary, we'll try to be specific or at least generally specific about where it disagrees and you'll see that or where it may vary and you'll see okay. that in a future one. Thank you. Sure, of course. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the um, increase in enrollment. Okay. And I'll second it. Thank you. No, that's fine. I appreciate it. So, so who? So Mary did a motion, and who seconded? Tricia. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, thank you, Trisha. I was going to, but uh, I appreciate it. Um, BRN monitor, um, would you take us? Thank you. The comment now, I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. And I will take it to a vote. I hope it votes yes. Mary Fagan? Mary Fagan, yes. Susan Aranjo? Susan? Thank you. Trisha Wynn? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Mary Ann, would you take us to the next? Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, we are on agenda item 8.9, which is discussion and possible action regarding the initial self-study for a pre-licensure nursing program. So just for clarity, um, 
when we have an initial self-study, this means that these two programs are brand new programs um, and that they have gone through a feasibility study, have come to the board and been approved to move forward with their self-study. They are here today because they did their full self-study. They provided their NEC with everything they needed to, to bring them forward um, for your decision on this new program. So the first one is um, 8.9.1, which is Fresno Pacific University Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program. And Fresno Pacific is requesting a new pre-licensure nursing program. Um, and they've committed or they've completed their initial self-study. Their enrollment request is for 24 students once a year, starting in August of 22, and progressing up to 36 students once a year in 23 and 48 students once a year in 24. And then they want to stay at 24 after that. So they want to, uh, again, progress from 36 to 48. I'm sorry, not 24 to 36 to 48 over a three-year period and then stay at that level. The program has met all board rules and regulations for an initial self-study. And as far as BRN data, um, again, the supply and demand for the Central Valley and San Joaquin region um, says that it faces shortages as much as 20 to 30, 35% or more. Um, workforce supply and demand for registered nurses in the San Joaquin Valley region forecast is that supply RNs will decrease, you know, the supply of RNs that are already there will decrease over time, and that demand is expected to grow um, because of population growth in this region. Um, the program's data agrees with what we found. Um, this initial self-study was done by Jeanette Wackerly, who is our now retired supervising um, education, nursing education consultant. And so I am pre presenting for her, um, and this program has a new NEC, Jeanette May Scott. So if you have any questions, the program director is here, um, as well as the dean, and I'm happy to assist in answering questions. Thank you, Mark. Just so you know. Lori. Um, I do want to interject here just to provide some additional education as this is the first time for our new board member. Um, and so this specific school, Fresno Pacific University, came in front of the board in June of 2019. They presented what's called a feasibility study. What that does is it shows to the board that they have the resources, they have the um, uh, budget, they have the ability to grant degrees. Um, they have an, a, 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 some sort of a accreditation of some sort. And the board deemed at that point that it they proved the feasibility or the need of a program in this area. So what happens after that is they go through a period where now they have the approval, they get a program director involved, they develop a curriculum, and they work with the nursing education consultant so that they can show that they are now in compliance with all rules and regs. So this school was approved to begin the process because they showed that it was feasible for them to do that in June of 2019. And this is the final step for them to be able to be an approved program and enroll students. Any questions, committee? Um, I believe um, you said that there was um, people from uh, Pac Fresno Pacific were going to talk, or well, there, there. We always have them here in case you have questions. Okay, um, I, I we do. Sorry, I'm, we do ask them to um, just wait for questions because we have given you an extensive amount of information in your packet. Yes, and I um, I don't know if other board members have questions. I am none for me. Okay, I um, I would I would mo can Marianne? Can you help me motion? I am good with the information. Um, would you help me uh, make so a motion? So you want to recommend yes um, approval of, of the initial self study for this pre licensure program at um, the University of Pacific. Yes, thank you. I motion. Would anybody second that with me? This is Mary, I'll second. 
Thank you, Mary. Um, BOM moderator, would you take us to public comment? Public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. I would like to take it to a vote. I hope it the votes yes. Mary Fagan? Mary Fagan, yes. Susan Aranjo? Trisha Wynn? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Mary Ann? We're to um, agenda item 8.9. Um, Yes, 8.9.2, discussion and possible action regarding initial self-study for a pre-licensure nursing program. This is Sri Shri Chris Institute, Associate Degree Nursing Program. And um, they are also here for an initial self-study. They did their feasibility, um, were moved forward by the board, and now have completed um, their initial self-study. They are requesting, um, there's a little bit of change from what they requested at their feasibility to what they're having now, so I, or what they're asking for now. So I just want to clarify that. I think that we have it, I don't think we have it clear or correct in the AIS. So please um, ignore that, and this is what it is. Um, their feasibility study, they asked for an enrollment of 24 students three times a year for an annual enrollment of 72 students. Um, now they're asking for 30 students three times a year with an annual enrollment of 90 students. So they're going from 72 to 90 in their total. Um, what else do I want to tell you? They've met all the board rules and regulations as far as their self-study um, goes. And um, as far as data, you know, they're in the Los Angeles region um, and we've talked about them before, but there is a growing supply of RNs due to the expansion of local RN education programs and satellite campuses that are being approved in the area. Um, projections of supply and demand through 2035 indicate that the RN shortage may exist um, at this time, but there is possible a possibility of a, of a um, surplus in the future. Um, the feasibility study was approved in February of 2021. Um, as far as when um, the NECs looked at the data, um, they see that it varies from, from in some way and mostly in the fact that it doesn't show the same workforce need um, when it comes to that area, the Los Angeles region. Um, Donna Schutte is the nursing education consultant. Um, the program director and the president and their consultant are all available if you have questions. Does anybody in the morning again? Real quick, I just wanted to add the additional information. This feasibility study for this school was approved by our board um, in February of 2021, so 11 months ago. So um, they are here uh, about a year later seeking the final step of the approval for them to enroll students. Um, this is Hobita. I have a question, um, Marianne, why did, or to the, um, Sarisa, the institute, um, the the reason for their increase from twenty, you know, twenty four times three versus the thirty. May I may I ask um, why they changed it? Sure, Maramona, can you ex um, could you um, address that? Let's see if they've been elevated yet.
and I'm not sure. So um, I, I couldn't find, find, find Donna and anymore. Julie. I couldn't find my Mona or the other, one. the other, the the two. Donna, is there another name we should be looking at as far as um, you know? I put um, Hermona Quadir and Vahea Kamir Baskar. I don't know. Is Donna Shudi elevated? She is. Yes, I am now. It is. It's uh, Judy. Uh, uh, see, Judy at Strategic Venture. Judy, yes, Judy's, Judy's here. Okay. Yeah, we and have Judy. It's the other two we're looking together. for. Okay. Unless you think they're all together in the same room? Yes, they are. Yes, they are all together. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Then, Judy, can you unmute? And um, I didn't realize you guys were in the same room. My, my apologies. I see Judy, but I don't, and she doesn't, well, she does look like she's on mute. She's unmuted on our end, Mark. I've sent a request to her, but she's not responding. Okay. Donna, could you reach out to them by email possibly, or if you have any other way of reaching them? Uh, they're not unmuted. They can't unmute for some reason. Yeah, and I can't unmute them. I'm sending the request. Uh huh. They should they're, get they're elevated. Problem. They're elevated. Maybe while we're waiting to resolve this, could I ask a quick question Absolutely. of Marianne? Sure. Um, well, I'm a little concerned about just your comments about they increased the number uh, since we did this report and you think there might be a surplus. So, you know, we would have young people, maybe young people could be middle aged people graduating from a program without opportunity uh, to find work and just, you know, just kind of wondering does this happen and would the board ever consider approving for the um you know the original ask or you know how might we approach that issue so you i you guys are welcome to um pretty much make any recommendation that you decide to the board um i don't know if donna donna could you speak do you have any idea why they changed the enrollment pattern from the feasibility to now And she may be trying to help them get on. I don't. I don't know. But I don't have that answer. But she may. Donna, are you I, there? I'm, I have them here on the phone. They are unable to be unmuted um, for it. They've worked on their side, but not. Okay. They say they can't get to the other side. But what it is is that they have the clinical placements, and also, um, you know, it's easier to have that number, uh, you know, for clinical groups up to ten. Oh. And they can, and that will allow them also to keep all the faculty full time. So there will be co uh, continuous, uh, con uh, consistency. And they do have a, a strong applicant pool. You know, for um, for quite a while now, they have had someone uh, taking applications. They have strong interest in the program, and individuals are ready uh, to to start in March if approved by the board. Does that make, does that yes, make thank any you. other questions? Thank you, okay, does that help, sure. Tricia? Yes, it does. Thank you. And as far as the regional data, um, Tricia, um, again, we we can only give information, Los Angeles region, the San Diego region, um, and a, a few a few pockets up north are, are pretty um, impacted according to our regional data. Um, but again, they have gone through the feasibility. They brought forth what they had. Um, and they are and actually, have again. okay, and they are actually North Orange County and a lot of their um, information that they received about the need for registered nurses is from um, just this uh, past year, 2021, from the U.S. Census Bureau stating that the impact of the co of COVID 
19 on our staff cannot really, it, it may not give a, a, a true picture in that there is a great need. You know, like I think it was 338,000 uh, registered nurses needed of, you know, to meet the needs of that, re of that area, the Stanton area, North, uh, North Orange County area. Okay, that, that, that helps, thank you. Okay. Trisha, just this is Lori again, just for some clarification on that. When the feasibility was approved, it was approved with the understanding of the same data and with the enrollment numbers at that point that they projected. So this increase is a different thing that you would want to take that into consideration. Not only do you want to take into consideration the workforce need, which we are seeing that it's there, but really take into consideration the impact on clinicals. We are very much aware at the Board of Registered Nursing that there is an impact in clinicals in the San Diego area, as well as the LA area. So right there being in North Orange County, they're right in between those two areas, and that is an impacted area as well. We did have a school last year, Western Governors University, who actually halted their program voluntarily because they were not able to obtain clinical placements in that area. So those are things to take into consideration. The board has the ability to accept the self-study as is with this enrollment that they're projecting forward. The board also has the ability to accept the self-study and to go back to the original um, projected enrollment that they did with the feasibility when you guys did your initial uh, assessment and approval or you can um, offer any other type of enrollment as you want to or not accept the self-study. If you choose not to accept the self-study, they do have the ability to return the board up to uh, an additional year um, to bring in additional data if that's something that a board would decide to do. So there are several options in front of you guys. And um, if you guys have questions, please let me know. Recommendation to the February board. Okay, because they are definitely going to board. There's always that progression from committee recommendation to board for board approval. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the self study. This is Jovita. Mary, just for clarification, with the feasibility enrollment or with the um, new um, increased enrollment? Well, if I understood the faculty correctly or the team that that would give them the ability to have 10 students per faculty. Is that the that's the going? I mean, that's the ratios that we um, that are supported. Is that Especially right now with COVID, Mary, um, which I'm sure you probably know, it just depends on the situation. I mean, it used to be 12 back in the day and then it was 10. And then um, even up to five, six years ago, it was eight to six. And now with COVID, it's down to, you know, six is great, but more like four, three, two um, per unit. So um, that's what I'm seeing and I'm approving for. So I don't know that we can say that that's, I, I don't know if that's really. Okay. There, the program's numbers will be changing based upon the needs of the facility and the in the specialty. And the other thing is, is that this will allow uh, the school to have more full time faculty and keep them, you know, so that they are able to work all year round. And they have the students also. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I think Donna, they're addressing the difference between the enrollment pattern that was presented last year and their feasibility and what they're presenting now in the increase. Yes. Which okay. I believe that's what the discussion is around. Yes. And I changed my motion to accept the self-study with the original enrollment. Okay. So <laughs> I recommend the exceptions of the initial self-study for a pre-licensure program with the feasibility um, enrollment numbers. And this is Jovita, I'll second it. And um, quick question here. So sure, would, sure, they, sure. would they be then allowed to come back at, how soon could they come back and make the case for, you know, this increased enrollment? Yeah, we, we um, programs do that all the time. They call it, they, we call it a substantive change. They come back and ask for a substantive change and an enrollment increase. And that's what we saw with CSU Bakersfield okay. later on today. 
established program. This is a brand new program, so they're not considered established yet, but as yeah. you know, now they're going to become a program, they're going to get started. They could come back and um, request an enrollment increase. Yeah, I mean, I, I think don't think there's anything in statute that says how much time has okay. to elapse, but they definitely have that option. I support the motion. I just, I, you know, I wish I knew a little bit more about, you know, you will. Why the, the, so anyway, maybe if we could just buy ourselves a little time, allow them to go forward, and then come back and revisit it. So thank you for that. Sure, no problem. So I think we have a first and a second. Yes. So be our moderator. Would you take us to public comment, please? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Judy, I've, I've uh, elevated you. Sorry, I didn't see you until just now. Is it Judy Corliss? Yes. Yeah, there she goes. Can you hear me? There I'm she so goes. sorry. Yes. I hear you now, Judy. Yay. Oh, okay. So Go sorry. ahead. Um, no problem. The, uh, the unusual circumstance that happened here was uh, Dr. Diana Sherlin uh, was the initial founding dean. And the week that she turned the feasibility in, she unfortunately passed away from kidney failure. So the college asked me to come in as a consultant to help them to get a new director, which we did. And we worked very diligently with Donna Schutte and she was fabulous working with us in every step of the way. We had to take this on after not having Dr. Diana Sherlin here because we, we couldn't use what was in her mind as to the original ask of the 24. But all of the programs I've consulted with since I've served on the nursing board, we've asked for three starts of 30 due to the faculty, if you only have 24 uh, per uh, start, then it's very difficult to get full-time faculty to stay. And so you have a disconnect between, um, you know, getting adjunct faculty and not having consistency. So I have always put in the three starts of 30. So that was the reason behind it. But we had about two to three weeks to get this thing ready for Donna after the unfortunate passing of Dr. Sherlin. So I um, hope that you will understand that. And uh, Donna was such a big help to help us bridge that gap from not having our original dean. Yeah, and our, their LVN population is huge and they um, all wanna be RNs. They don't even wanna do the 30 unit option. They wanna just start from square one and go right through. They do have a large number in the wings awaiting the program. So. Anyway, that's that's where we're at. And if you have any questions from our director or the owners, they're available here to speak. Okay. Thanks, Judy. Okay, thank you. Marcus, is there anyone else on public comment? Uh, sorry, hold on here. Uh, Alice Martinegra would like to make a comment. One second, please. Go ahead. Yes, Hi. go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, this is Alice Maltamigara, and I am uh, the program director and associate dean for Golden West College. Um, I am also the chair for the Orange County Long Beach Consortium. And it states in their document that they're members of the mm -hmm. Orange County Long Beach Consortium. And we don't see them as members. And we would like to know where they are placing their students for clinical, because as we speak right now in Orange County, 
uh, especially with the recent pandemic for just spring semester, we have been decreased uh, with our clinical placements up to one faculty or one clinical rotation to five students. And they're be all because the hospitals don't have enough nurses who are able to precept uh, or work with our students. And so the faculty are working side by side, basically, as almost like staff with the students uh, to care for the patients while they're in rotations at the hospital. So we just, um, we appreciate the board to look at that uh, when considering approving uh, a large number of amount of students to this county and the region. Thank you. Um, I can Thank respond you. to that if possible. We see if there's any sure. other public comment. Sure. Thanks, no. Judy. We we do. We have we have more. Okay. Thank you. Did you want to go on to the next yeah. one? Yeah. Let's just go to the next one. Thanks, Judy. Okay. We'll we'll catch them all as we as we finish. Sure. All right. Thank you for your comment. Mary Steckler would like to make a comment. One second, please. Go ahead. Hello, this is Mary Steckler from Santa Ana College Nursing Program. And I was going to re just reiterate what Alice just mentioned. But also, um, <clears throat> we are also experiencing some clinical placement displacements and lack of clinical sites for our current enrollment. And our LVN list is over 100 right now. And they have been on there for quite some time because we can't increase enrollment, let alone even get our own third semester clinical rotations through. So please, again, I don't know where they vetted the hospitals to get their placements, but I would really strongly encourage you to consider this when you make your decisions. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Dr. Reuven Cohen would like to make a comment. Dr. Cohen. Dr. Cohen, you have to um, click the unmute me. Can you text him? Hey, Judy, can you go on mute? I don't want anybody to hear your conversation. Thanks. I'm a uh... Sending the unmute to Dr. Cohen. I'm. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else in queue? No, he he's final one. Thank you. Let's see, try this. Oh, wait a minute, where'd he go? Dr. Cohen, there you go. I think I, I think I finally uh, got through. There um, you go, you're ready. I was you, clicking sir. it and clicking it, but I don't think you had me unmuted centrally. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Reuven Cohen. I'm uh, a doctor of osteopathic medicine, and I'm uh, 
program director for the uh, general education uh, courses uh, at uh, Sri Sai Krish uh, Institute. And uh, I am also uh, uh, the uh, life partner I was until she passed away in October of uh, Dr. Diana Sherland, who I'm sure the board would recognize has uh, uh, brought about uh, many nursing programs throughout California. And uh, I really just wanted to say that uh, uh, in their uh, self-study, I know that uh, uh, all of the clinical placements were checked and rechecked, and there, there seemed not to be the type of problem that the last two, uh, uh, the last two uh, commenters made. And uh, uh, the uh, Institute, of course, has had programs for LPN and uh, nursing assistants. They have a large number of students that are ready and waiting to, uh, to enroll. And uh, I think uh, I just wanted to clarify those aspects that uh, this program is really ready to go uh, in another month and uh, I think would be a real help to the community. Uh, they also serve many uh, students who are uh, from uh, uh, more problematic backgrounds and uh, it's one of their goals to serve that community. Thank you for listening. Dr. Col uh, Cohen, condolences on your loss from everyone at the board. Thank you so much. She was uh, quite a woman. Committee Chair Dominguez, there are no other public requests for comments. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please. Thank you. So I'd like to take it for a vote. I hope it the votes yes. Teresa, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm Trisha sorry. has a question. Go ahead, Teresa. Oh. Uh, uh, this is something that's going to become more familiar to me as we move forward. But Marianne, do, does staff um, do uh, you know, an assessment of the placement options when you write up a report on this? And um, yes, there are many things that are just like the continuing approval visit an initial self study and um, the feasibility studies are very extensive and there's okay. absolutely specific things that they have to have in order to uh, move forward. Um, I think what we're seeing here and I, cause we're hearing the, hospital side and then we're hearing the student side uh -huh. and not the student side the school side yeah um it's not that there's not enough it's it, well there may be that especially because of covid there's shortage of nurses right uh -huh. so that can be the problem is is that it's not necessarily because there's not enough students and the problem that we're having and you hear from these other what we're hearing anyway is that these other schools, especially community colleges in mm -hmm. these areas, are having a really hard time um, serving the students they have. And as someone said, they're not able to increase. They're actually decreasing in order to stay afloat. So um, I think that that's, that's what you're hearing. It's not so much that there's not an, that there isn't a shortage, but at least at this time, but there's an excess of students for clinical placement. Um, is I think what we're getting to. Um, I also wanted to give um, Judy Corliss the chance to speak to um, the consortium um, that was brought up because the board, at least in the in the past, has been very um, pro consortium and belonging to the consortium. And Tricia, for you, the consortium is in different areas, and they help facilitate um, clinical placement. And so um, I believe that's what um, they were asking about. Judy, did you want to speak to your uh, to your um, membership? Yeah. Yes, she has been a member, the owner has been a member of the consortium for years. And with the question of clinical facilities, we have um, many and they are in the packet. So I'm not sure if the previous uh, commenters did not see that, but uh, we have plenty. We have no displacement anywhere. We um, have the college is willing to take weekends and nights and each and every one of them has been approved. Uh, and then as of yesterday, three more came through with 105 facilities from the Providence Administrative um, Office. And we sent that on to Donna 
Uh, so there's another 105 facilities that we receive for our students to go through. Uh, the community knows that these students, especially her LVNs, have had um, you know, a very hard time in life. And so they've been very good at helping them. And she's got a 100% pass rate with all of those students because they spend a lot of time with them. And they intend to do the same with the RNs. So that, you know, was the reason that we, you know, had asked for the 30 as opposed to the 24, just to bump it up enough to have high consistency and to keep a nurse success educator there employed full time to help each and every one of the students. So I know they're going to be very successful and we will not displace anyone uh, at any of the facilities, um, whether it's a junior college or whatever it is, we will not. And I know she has not done that in her LVN rotations. Thank you so much to Donna for all of her very uh, fine help and getting this um, everything approved to the BRN's regulation. Laurie, I hope that was able to kind of answer your questions a little bit. I wanted to provide some additional clarification. I'm not sure if it was um, clear. When you asked whether the NECs look at the clinical placements, what they look for is, are those clinical placements appropriate to that school? So in our regulation 16 CCR 1427, the board needs to approve clinical placements. As part of that clinical placement, they look to see is that health, is that facility able to give the um, uh, education that's required to that student for them to meet their course objectives so that they can be prepared to be a safe practicing RN. What our NEC does not look at specifically is area schools and whether or not they're affected. We rely heavily on the program director at the school that's requesting the site to say that they're not displacing, as well as the facility that is um, contracting with this academic institution to say that they're not displacing. There is no true way at this particular point that the BRN or the NECs can go in there and ensure emphatically that there will not be any clinical displacements. What happens is right here within public comment, which is a beautiful representation of why we have these committee meetings, why we go to board meetings, and why we do these presentations. We have a school that says, I have these contracts. Um, I have these clinical approvals that the NEC has done. And I have these students that want to enroll in my school, and I have the resources to support them. I have the healthcare facilities that we've contracted with that has assured us that we will not have a displacement. But then in public comment, we hear that the person that oversees the consortium says, I don't know that you're a member. What that may be is that they're, they may be a member for their LVN program, but not a member for their RN program. I don't know. This is what we just heard for the first time in um, public comment. What we also hear in public comment is the area schools who reach out to the board that say, hey, I understand that this school said that they're not going to have a displacement and this new academic institution has these contracts with these pro with these facilities that are stating that they're not going to displace, but I'm letting you know that I am near them and I have displacement. This will affect us. And so this is where the board takes that information into consideration. This is where the public has the ability to say, the information that you're receiving may be accurate, may not be accurate. I want to tell you my story. So the role of the NEC is to make sure they meet regulations. That regulation is in 1427 that we approve clinical sites to meet the objectives of the program so the school's students can um, graduate and progress. And part of that regulation says that they will take into consideration that there will not be displacement. But the NEC does not have the ability to predict whether or not there is displacement, will be displacement, um, because once this is approved and enrollment numbers are there, to increase enrollment, the school does have to come back through a substantial change request um, for an enrollment increase. And we do an evaluation, again, very similar to this process. To decrease enrollment, that is something that we talked about with ELAC, we talked about with LA Trade, Victor Valley. That's a, a much harder process to do. 
So um, just wanted to throw that out there, Tricia, for you being a new board member and coming into this uh, meeting. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Thank you very much. That's extraordinarily helpful. I appreciate it. Question for the school, and I know I have my motion on the table, but I'm just looking at your materials in a little more detail right now and that you're going to be serving an economically depressed area and looking for a very diver diverse um, you know, group of students. Mm -hmm. And yet the five semester tuition is $65,000. Just wondering what resources you have to support that tuition for uh, $65,000 for an associate degree program. That seems extremely high to me. Um, so as for the um, tuition, the school is a part of the Title IV funding. Um, many of them who have finished the LVN program, after they went to work, they've all been able to successfully um, pay back their loans over the numbers of years she's been in business. So um, most schools do have Title IV funding and they are lower than most RN programs. Uh, so that's how that happens is um, they usually use Title IV funding. Some of them do have somebody to help fund them um, as far as scholarships go, I know the school has had some hardship scholarships to help the students and some other resources. I don't have the list, but I, we could get it for the board by the board meeting if you'd like. Yeah, I think that'd be important to know because that. Okay. 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 We'll have that for you by the board meeting. Questions from the board? Then I'd like to take it to a vote. I Jovita votes yes. Mary Fagan. Mary Jovita, Fagan. do you do oh. you do you mind if I restate to make sure that we have the motion correct that you guys are moving forward on? Yes, I would like that. Thank you, Marianne. Okay. So the motion I have for Shearside Chris Institute Associate Degree Nursing. Um, new self-study for pre-licensure is that there will be a recommendation of acceptance of this initial self-study for this for Shushai Chris Institute um, with the enrollment pattern from feasibility which is 24 students three times a year yes I believe correct? yes Mary that is correct okay thank you Oh, I, I was actually asking Mary Fagan to verify that that's what we intended. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mary Ann, that's, that's what okay. we wanted. Thank you. That's on the table. Thank uh, you. With Mary, Mary made the motion and you, Jovita, had the second. Yes, and we'd like to take it to a vote. I vote yes. Mary Fagan? Mary Fagan, yes. Susan Aranco? And Tricia Wynn? Yes. Thank you. And this takes us to 8.10, um, and that would be adjournment. Um, will Dolores um, be back with us?